Um, so this is my tutorial on agar bioplastic. So this bioplastic in particular is made out of agar, or rather agar rose, uh, which comes from a red seaweed. To actually make this stuff, you're going to need a few different materials um, and a few different tools. First off, you're going to need a source of heat. Um, you'll need a pot uh, and some stirring utensils. Um, you'll need water, agar, and this is technically optional, um, but I would highly recommend it. Uh, glycerin, also known as glycerol. Um, food coloring is oh, food coloring is optional uh, if you want to color it. I'm gonna make some that's uncolored for the actual reuse library, um, and then I'm gonna make some colored stuff that I might use later. You'll need some little measuring uh, some things. And then the last thing that you need is going to be something to pour it into. I like to put it on these sheets of laminate uh, that I have um, because it's really nice to peel off uh, and easy to do like lots of different shapes and things. So those are the things that you're going to need. Um, I'm going to start by setting up my actual forms. So to make the actual mixture, um, let me just get this out of the way here. Uh, you're going to start with some water. Um, I'm using 250 milliliters. Um, you'll see at the end sort of how much that makes. Um, and you can just pour that directly into your pot. Um, then you're going to add uh, your actual agar. You can see here, um, it just looks like this white powder. Uh, so I have about two tablespoons of agar in here. Um, just a little powder. I'm just going to pour that in. Uh, and then adding, I'm going to do about half the amount of glycerin. Um, glycerin is really helpful to make it more flexible, but it also, if you add too much, can start to make it really sticky. There we go. And then you want to put it on sort of a medium-low heat um, and just start stirring it a little bit. Um, what you're looking for is a sort of low boil, um, you know when it kind of like starts to get that ring of like little fizzles in the bottom? Um, and then you're going to do that for about a minute, um, just to make sure that everything's nice and broken down. Um, this stuff will shrink a bunch, especially if there's less glycerin in it, and especially if it's cast into like a form rather than a sheet. Um, so something you want to be aware of is that it is going to shrink a bunch, and that is, like I said, going to depend on the amount of glycerin. Um, but, so we're supposed to have a three inch little like circle. This is a four inch container. It's just like a random container. Um, and I'm hoping that it'll shrink down to about three inches. Uh, if not, I will report back. Okay, you can see it's starting to bubble a little and froth up a bit on the top. So we are getting closer. Again, this is the sort of light boil. Uh, I'm gonna say that's good. So I'm gonna turn it off and take it off of the heat. So then you're going to want to pour it into your forms. Um, again, you can see it's pretty liquidy. Uh, so if you don't have edges on that, it will just go. And then I'm going to add some coloring to this. So then you're going to pour it out into your form. And you want a nice, relatively thin layer. Um, it will lose more thickness as it dries. That is what I have uh, for this demo. I will come back at the end and show you what everything looks like. Uh, so it's been a couple of days and everything's dried out. Um, after about 24 hours, uh, you should peel up your uh, sheets or like take out anything that you've uh, put into containers um, and let it dry for another uh, day or two. Um, I actually pulled out my um, sheet a little bit early, and you can see I tore it by accident. Um, however, the sheet, now that it's dry, has made a sort of um, pretty flexible, uh, slightly stretchy, kind of fruit leathery feeling um, piece. It's a tiny bit tacky to the touch, but not too bad. Um, not like sticky or slimy or anything. Um, and you can see it did dry down to a slightly thinner sheet. I also have my piece for the material library, um, which shrank down a little more than I expected. Uh, it's about 60%, uh, so it came to about 2.5 inches uh, out of that 4-inch container. 
mine also wrinkled a tiny bit, um, which can happen. But you can see here uh, about how much it shrank um, in that container. Um, so the reason that I'm actually interested in bioplastic uh, is, well, I did a piece uh, with gelatin bioplastic, which is similar but a little different, um, a couple years ago. Uh, I can put pictures of it right next to me here. And I've been interested in uh, agar-based bioplastics because agar is actually what's used uh, as a substrate for slime mold uh, to be grown on, and I'm very interested in slime mold lately. Um, so I actually have a little piece um, that I grew some slime mold on. Um, so it's just agar, so you can see it is very papery and brittle. Um, but I'll put a picture up. Um, you can see the little tracks that the slime mold like grew into it. Um, so that's very cool.